So here I am, getting all excited, about to start on some housekeeping jobs in the workshop that I've been looking forward to doing for months. And we get some orders come in from an online reseller that we agreed to work with a while ago for boards that I don't have in stock. So I'm going to make a couple of what I refer to as a medium sized board and if I've got enough timber, a couple of what I refer to as a large size board. I'll put the sizes down in the descriptions below for you. So typically I'm just short of enough of the 50 mil stock to make two of the larger boards. So I'm going to have to go to the woodshed and hope that it's been dry enough this summer for me to be able to use it straight out. I don't think so. But anyway, it gives me an opportunity to have a look at this. Eric Hill sent me their wood moisture meters to have a look at so I thought I'd try the little baby one the little pocket style it's mega small really cute I'm hoping I'm going to be able to see that tiny little screen but it does feel about the perfect size to slip in your pocket eh? and they send you batteries auto shut down it'll turn itself off after about 10 minutes of operation or a long press of the power button, cool. 10 minutes is a long time though. Press the M key to select the type of material that you want. Hmm, that could well be a little annoying. I'm not sure if you can see that on the camera because I can't tell whether you can or not. Uh, but it doesn't say type of material as in wood or concrete or whatever, it just says M1 material type 1 so material 3 we want because I need some oak so we're on number 3 it also tells you the current relative humidity okay and that's your lot this is apparently 10.6 I'm quite surprised so this has been in the workshop for yonks and this is reading it at 11 10.9 11% I'm quite surprised at that I was expecting between 7 and 8 yeah 11.3 but dropping and this 11.4 11.3 drop in 10.9 drop in let's just take a reading at the end at the end grain I've got 9.9 9.9 .9. So that is really pleasant to use. Cute little size. Absolutely ideal for slipping in the pocket and carrying around with you. Not that I need to keep one in my pocket and check the moisture content of timber on a regular basis throughout the day. But if you do, definitely have a look at that. Although I'm wondering whether if you did keep it on your, in your pocket, whether you'd end up pressing these buttons by accident, turning it on and then running the battery down. The only downside of this is the fact that the type of material that you're going to test is represented on the screen by a number. So unless you've memorized what section you need to be, you're, you've got to keep that. And if you lose that, you're kind of buggered. But apart from that, mm, first impressions, really good. So starting off with my medium sized chopping board, 350 by 250 by 35 mil finished size is what I'm aiming for, shooting for. Uh, so allowing for finished size par planed all round timber at 32 mil thick or greater, then I'm gonna cut this piece into 500 mil long pieces, which is the ideal length to make these medium sized chopping boards. So I'm going to run all of the larger stock through at the same time. It's about 52 millish, 54 millish, somewhere around there. Hopefully I'll get 50 mil out by the time I've finished thickness in it. And then I'll run through all of the 38 mil stock at the same time. I've got to the point with the thickness in where the majority of them are flat and square on the three sides. I've got a couple up here that are considerably thinner in parts and I'm going to have to remove quite a bit more material. 
but I don't need every single piece to be exactly the same thickness. So I'm going to start making the medium sized boards. And then when I get to the point where I need something out of these two bits, then I can thickness those down to size, if you follow. So as close as I can get to it, I'm shooting for 175mm, 150mm, 240mm, 230mm. And that gives me the pattern that's representative of the picture that's on their website. And I'm going to try and do it so I get maximum yield out of the stock that I've got. No wastage. Or at least as little as humanly possible. So the little shape I draw on top of the timber not only helps me to make sure I put the piece back in the right place, but also I always say to myself, to me, to you, to me, to you, so that the first piece with the mark to me, the second piece with the mark to the fence, or to you, then to me, to you, to me, to you, as I go down through each piece to get that nice perfect glue joint. That way I can allow for any slight misalignment in the fence. God forbid. Incidentally, I bought this little roller from Workshop Heaven. Didn't really pay that much attention to the size. I gotta be honest. So when it arrived and I opened the packet, I thought, my Lord in heaven, what on earth is this? Tiny little thing. This is gonna be as much use as a chocolate teapot. But in actual fact, it's kind of perfect for this sort of wit stock and indeed even larger pieces it seems to cope with admirably so I take it back workshop heaven so I'll glue up the rest while you sit there and contemplate what culinary delights are in store for you this evening So the first board I'm cutting up is the larger board and for this board I need a finished height of 40mm. So I'm going to cut one clean edge and then I'm going to measure back 42mm. So I've got enough to play with, a couple of mil to play with to eradicate any issues that might occur in the glue up, hopefully none. And then I'm going to set a stop on my fence and just cut the whole board up into 42mm pieces. Then I can glue it up, set it aside and it's ready for the final stages tomorrow. So the pattern on these boards is literally just the reversal. I think I'm gonna swap that one out, look. For that nice clean piece. But if I go that way, less of a difference. What I do like to do is oppose these two bits, then oppose these two bits, then oppose these two bits, and so on. This is where my old roofing and stair layout square comes in. Perfect. And it means I don't need to use any of those lovely red anodized tools that are hanging behind me. I 
Okay, rinse, lather, repeat. On the downhill run with these boards now, heading towards the finish line. So I'm going to pop them all out of the clams. And then I'm going to run one side across the surface planer after putting a roundover on the back edge so that I don't get any breakout. And then I'll decide whether I'm going to run them through the thicknesser or through the drum sander based on, well, how good a job I did on the glue up, really. I moved away from using the 60 grit cloth back paper on the drum sander a long time ago because of the amount of scarring it leaves on the surface of the timber. But since I've changed to the Cubitron paper in the Rotex sander, it's no longer an issue. The Cubitron paper is absolutely amazing. If you haven't tried it yet, give it a blast. I'll leave a link to it down below to my Amazon site where if you do happen to make a small purchase I may well get a little kickback but not at your cost at theirs so everything is good. I prefer to use the belt sander the HS 950 for flattening the edges to get rid of any irregularities after the glue up. It's superb the bed is guaranteed 90 degrees never goes out of truth absolutely love it one of the best purchases i've made in a long time so after squaring up the edges it's a quick blast over with 80 grit all round everywhere so on the corners then so i've tried cutting corners every way i could think of and this is by far my favorite so straightforward and simple. I've got rather an oversized JCB half inch router that I've had for a long time, mentioned it before. A little bit heavy perhaps. I made this enlarged base out of a piece of five mil acrylic for the router so that I've got extra purchase, extra balance when I'm using the router. And the action I, I prefer to take is just to pivot the router around this point so I've got my hand on the handle and also pushing down on that blank and I can keep it nice and flat and make my cut with relative ease and I can get through them all pretty darn quick. So out of this batch of boards, the only one the skidding handles is the larger board, the smaller ones I really don't think need it and nobody's asked for them on it, so I don't. So to cut the handles, again I've tried every approach I can think of and what I've ended up with is this real simple jack that I use with a ball and tray bit, bearing guided ball and tray bit. So I mark centre of the board and then line the jig up with it, clamp the jig down and I've got my router preset to about 15 mil if memory serves. And there you go, handles, dead simple, really quick. Uh, you may have gathered, I really like simple and quick. Whichever method you've decided to use to cut your handles with, spend a bit of time sanding it and make sure it is beautifully smooth to the touch because that's the bit the customer is going to be picking up time and touching time and time again and you really want that to be 
as pleasant an experience as possible. And the final step before I laser my logo onto the board is to sand it within an inch of its life with 180 grit again, so that it's as smooth as the proverbial all over. And now we burn. And finally, some mineral oil to finish. This mineral oil coat will be followed by a coat of mineral oil with beeswax uh, blended into it at a third to two thirds beeswax to mineral oil mix that I make up myself. I don't subscribe to the Dunker approach. I don't think the boards need it. The majority of the oil that the board absorbs when it's in the bath drips back out again. So I fail to see the benefit. By doing it this way, it gets a good coat. And it doesn't take anywhere near as long to dry. Look at that. Rather a handsome devil, I think. There they are, chopping boards, all ready to go out. All bar, like I say, this uh, mineral oil and beeswax finish. The other four, I think they can sit in the workshop for a bit, because I'm going to have a sit me down. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time. Ta-ra.